Jupiter at night is presented live. Jupiter at night on the internet. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to Jupiter at night. My name is Chris. My name is Jeremy. Yeah, you're probably saying, what the F is that? Here? Holy crap. That's a big thing. <laughs> crowded. I don't like it. But then you're like, uh, maybe it's a computer. In fact, uh, we got an internal shot here. We should. Show I do. This thing's kind of cool. So well, this is uh, our. Well, that's Hackintosh. not the great framing, but. Well, you know, we'll we'll show you more. We're gonna put it down on its side and stuff. Yeah. But this is our Hackintosh here, and it, it isn't working. No. It's broken. Now, if you guys uh, tune in to Jupiter at Night for a long time, actually, just Jupiter Broadcasting for a long yeah. time, about a year ago. We built this. Yeah, yeah. In fact, it, it's documented on the internet itself. We released the building of this computer and some of the background why we're building this computer, uh, our thoughts on the uh, legal stand a- aspects of it, all that kind of stuff are all in this YouTube video mm-hmm. that uh, we'll link to in the show notes. You can go over there and see that. It's kind of, a, it's long. It's two and a half jump. hours of Chris's face. You can you, you probably can't go You probably eat the motion like in the first, like, what, 15 minutes? Yeah, and then it's mostly just us going, okay, so this part goes here. And then we build it. And then, whoa, I dropped a screw. And, and then it doesn't <laughs> boot. And then we fail miserably. Yeah. And we thought, let's put that out and see. And then we did a part two where we got it working. But right. anyways. Long story, endless. Yeah, long, yeah, long endless story. Uh, this guy started as our main video switcher. Our video switching software runs on uh, Mac OS X. Mm-hmm. Kind of to our chagrin, really, because here at Jupiter Broadcasting, we're kind of geeks. We like to do things the open source route, and we're big Linux guys. And I'm a big gamer. That makes me kind of guy for sucked into Windows. Or at least for familiar enough that it's a good workflow for Yeah, them. absolutely. Um, and, of course, you know, we try to do as much of our workflow as possible. In fact, I don't possible. use Macs outside of the studio. No, no. no. Why would you, so. really? I mean, if you're, not, if you're not using something for video production. Right. But when you get into video production, a lot of the software out there you need only runs on Macs. Right. Um, and also some of the codecs that they can save to are only available on the Mac. Mm-hmm. Etc. Cetera, Etc. Cetera. Long story short is we needed a tower because you need to be able to put expansion cards in there and stuff like that. For, like, video capture and whatnot. Plus, you built a whole RAID in here of, like, yeah, five yeah. different drives. Yeah, I don't know how much... If you're watching the video version, uh, or if you're listening to the audio version, there's a bunch of drives that we have installed in here that are all actually in a are in a, in a RAID 0. Mm-hmm. Um, not the safest thing to do. In fact, if I... That, c- that I, means no redundancy, yeah, right? I might redo this as a RAID 5, but, you know, I was going for raw performance because uh, we're dealing with such huge video files. We, res- we save in really big files. Uh, right. So... It, we needed something that was more than an iMac, and a laptop wouldn't do. Right. But the tower, jeez, the tower cost. Now, so expensive. do you want to talk a little bit about why we decided to go with what is basically termed as a Hackintosh? Well, it just came down to the, the, the Mac Pro tower. Mm-hmm. It, it just is not in our budget. It was a price thing. It's absolutely a price thing. It was thing. about a $1,200 difference, I think, if I remember right. Between and this is really good hardware, guys. Oh, yeah, yeah. Even though this thing's almost a year old now, this is a Core i7. Uh, which initially we planned to have running. That's why there's a massive heatsink on there. We had plan- planned to have running at 4 gigahertz. I mm-hmm. have another Core i7-920 uh, uh, running at 4 gigahertz that uh, you're actually sitting yeah, at right now. It's a gaming so rig. That's, is basically that's, a, that's a task high res, yeah. I've, I've pulled off and, and felt confident. Yeah. This motherboard's exceptional. I've got nice RAM, all that kind of stuff. That, you know, when we initially started having problems, that was the first thing we turned off. Mm-hmm. But, you know, so you have a 4 gigahertz. Core i7. Actually, you know what? 12 it, gigabytes of RAM. Yeah. And, you know, I, I think I think the grand three terabytes worth of storage in that RAID configuration. Mm-hmm. A thousand watt uh, Cooler <laughs> Master, which is a great brand, or not Cooler Master, PC Power and Cooling. No, it is Cool Master, also a great brand. Mm-hmm. Uh, thousand watt power supply. To, and the video card. I don't even remember what it is, yeah, but it's a nice. monster. Yeah, it's a monster. Um, I, I do want to touch on something that you just it's mentioned, way though. Than is, a Mac Pro. Right. I mean, there's the price point, but. Uh, what were we talking about? Well, I think you know the the the, the main thing for us is the expansion card slots, and that's where the yeah. tower is important. Is because we couldn't you can get a right, nice exactly. Core i7 iMac, but you can't get you can't get a Core i7 tower that has or iMac that has expansion slots. Mm-hmm. And so that's really where we hit the road with this guy. So that's where the now, Hackintosh. She so said, "So why Hackintosh?" Right. Well, when you can't get when you can't afford a Mac Pro, but you need expansion slots and you need all this RAM. Your only other option is mm-hmm. Hackintosh. Apple doesn't make anything else Now, this thing, uh, we intended to have it replace our system out here that does all of our work for us, runs our camera switcher, yeah. our live green screening, streams it out, everything like yeah. that. So, but yeah. when we first plugged it in out here, it wasn't functioning. Yeah, it just was... It was. I, I think the first time to go around, I, I think you know, it, it got up and going eventually mm-hmm. with the operating system. We did have difficulty. In fact, that's in that video that we shot. Right. Uh, and then we got it running. And just 
to let you know, we're not going to be covering all the software, the the OS getting it up and right. running. So if you're curious about that, check in those fact, old videos. Uh, you know, I should say it, it just started crashing, and so that's mm -hmm. why we have it here tonight. Is the intention is I'm going to start pulling some parts out of it, and over this week. We're gonna rebuild this Hackintosh on the on the show with you guys and yeah. on the live stream and all because that. Because basically, at this point, we've determined that the problem is hardware related. Yeah. We've tried booting it up under Windows, still crashes. We've tried booting it up under Linux, yep. I think just Ubuntu, right? Yeah. And uh, still crashes. Yeah. Same exact um, symptoms of the crash. And we've also had problems where when you when the case gets bumped, it shuts off. Which leads us to believe it's probably case related. Some sort of grounding issue, wiring. Or something like that. Right. So the first thing that we're gonna do is uh, hey, how's the shot look with it on the side? Because I? I think I want to. If I can, if you guys are watching, if you're not, it's all right. I'll describe it in the I audio. I just showed a little bit of the secret too. sauce, sorry. But uh, you <laughs> see, one of the things we did is we have an extra network card in here. And I think I'm just going to, I think the first thing I want to do is eliminate all, any kind of variables and stuff. Now, so I'm going to pull that. I think. One of the reasons you put that in there was when we switched over to Windows. It started we, dropping well, one the, of the first times, Yeah, one of the first times after a crash, the network card was just totally gone. Yeah. I, and it was gone under OS X too. So I rebooted into Windows, still gone. And so we installed so I, an extra. Well, yeah, because it was like, oh, we can't get files off it. So right. we went out and got a PCI. And, you know, you, I'm going to switch. So I, yeah. We got a PCI uh, NIC here. And you kind of have some more limited options with a Hackintosh, but you still get a nice, you know, gigabit NIC. Mm -hmm. um, so it, you, have to, you can't just go out and buy anything. Actually, that's one of the reasons we're looking to replace the system out here is because not only is the NIC frequently going out, but it also frequently caps out at a lower data rate than we need. Mm -hmm. Just a driver. There's weird. See, we're not really big fans. Of, it's funny we're talking about Hackintoshes, but I don't think either one of us would really advocate. Unless no, unless um, you're not if you if you're not using it for anything important. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like if you've got several thousand dollars laying around, I, I you want to build like a Mac that, compatible. I didn't want to build that dick that was like, well, uh, if you're using anything that's a production system, uh, I just can't recommend it because I'm a big shot. But really, it's really what it is, is uh, we would be using this, and if it would die on us and we had everything on there, mm -hmm. it wasn't a ma We don't have, like, extra room in our schedule for, oh, when the machinery goes down, we just don't have an episode. Right. So we would just not have an episode of a show, uh, mainly actually having a beer is tasty. And you guys know watching this, watching Jupiter at Night, we do this show three times a week, then yeah. we have... Two other weekly shows right. and another bi-weekly show. Right. I mean, it, one day off means one of those shows. Oh, it's not a monster. It's just a GTX 260. Oh, but only. Well, I mean, that's a pretty dang good card. It's not too bad, but uh, so I, I pull. I'm pulling. I'm going to start pulling this stuff out, and then we've got like a little area over here. I'm setting it on. All right. Um, we're probably not going to finish the tear apart tonight. No, we well, don't I think wanna... we'll just keep doing that on the live stream. But yeah. um, the the uh, the angle I think I maybe want to talk about is. Uh, the, the main requirement here, I want to make sure we cover this. The main requirement, we couldn't just use a Windows PC or a Linux mm -hmm. box. The main requirement is the switching software that we use. Yeah, the um, kind of the brains of the whole operation. Yeah, and it all runs on top of QuickTime, which we're going to kind of cover some more about that tomorrow. Yeah, uh, we'll get kind of more in-depth about the QuickTime workflow. And because that, because that QuickTime workflow goes directly into our editing software, which is Final Cut, mm -hmm. the nice thing is, is like how we do this, show, this very show... We do. We're shooting the show right now at eight twenty-two p.m. It'll be out for people to download in high definition by about ten thirty, and the yeah. only way that's possible is if when you're rec the exact format you recorded in, you can drop it in your in your editor and edit. If you, if, if if this was going to tape, even we wouldn't build. It wouldn't be possible because you'd have to <laughs> import it and then convert it. Yeah. Or if it was being shot to SD, it would likely be like an H.264, and we'd have to convert it before right. we could edit it. So. The fact that we can switch, like, you know, we can do things like, oh, look at that. There's there's the screen. Sorry about yeah. that. And <laughs> I keep showing the secret sauce. I know. <laughs> and, and, and we can screen screen live and record to a file that we can drop on air is a really big deal. And it right. really makes it so we can do these shows with the time that we have available. So that's kind of why we have to do this. I think we'll maybe talk some more about that as people leave comments and have questions. Mm -hmm. But uh, the, the specs, just before we wrap up, because I know that's going to be one of the questions, is the... Uh, the main thing is the motherboard I got here is a Gigabyte EX58 UDP uh, 4P, and that that sounds right. So it is a Gigabyte GA. Gigabyte, FX. first of all, is just a great brand to yeah, start with. I love this board. It's got a nice copper reinforcement mm -hmm. on it. It's a really nice. So when you're board. pushing your cards in there, do you yeah. don't hear that crunch? Yeah, it's got. It feels like you're not going to break it. Um, yeah. So that's the board. Now that I've pulled out the video card, you can see it a little better. Mm -hmm. uh, and 
supposedly this uh, f- I, this motherboard is really well known for its overclocking capabilities, but it's also supposed to be really well known for its Hackintosh compatibility. Yeah. Uh, so I know that's one supposed of the things, to be one of the things people are going to ask. Is yeah, I do want to talk. Uh, you know, we've we've done a lot of troubleshooting on our own of trying to figure out what the problem is. Chris has tried underclocking it. Yeah. Changing the voltage on the RAM to basically every single combination humanly yeah. and possible. And it's all running at the recommended spec now. I mean, yeah. everything's totally normal. So. If there was a problem with the, the hardware, or with the software, I mean, and, and the settings that we've used, then it's just an incompatibility issue. But we did a lot of research on the I, incompatibility. I, I really think it's, you know, I, we really, the parts were researched and, mm-hmm. and validated by a lot of the people in the audience. I really think it's got to be an electrical thing. I think because, so, too. Because of the randomness and the, and the bumping it mm-hmm. and stuff. And it's under every OS. And it's and a really great power supply. It's, you know, uh, really... Not and it's not a heat issue because it can happen right when it boots up, or mm-hmm. it could happen five days later. Right, it could. Some, it has sometimes ran for like five days. I think our record was nine, almost two weeks. It might have been. And so what what we're gonna do is tonight we're gonna keep tearing it apart, and we're gonna try to find like any weird wiring or some in- missing insulate insulators, something like that. It might actually be some of the built-in wiring of the case itself because it's got a few buttons on the front. Could uh, be like power could be switch. Jumpered weird right. you know, down there. Who knows? So. Uh, we're going we're gonna to finish tearing this guy apart tonight on the live stream, and then tomorrow's Jupiter at night, uh, it's going to get reassembled. I'll probably reassemble some of, some of it. I'm not, like, pulling out the drives and stuff, but, like, the power supply and the motherboard. Basically checking the wiring, yeah. more or less. Uh, so we're going to reassemble tomorrow and try to get it to boot up on the live stream tomorrow. Mm-hmm. So that'll be tomorrow night's episode. If we're we, also going to be well. trying to have a conversation while he does this about a little more in-depth on our workflow, why we're kind of gotten suckered into QuickTime, and mm-hmm. we can't get out. I mean, Kind of locked in, but voluntarily. Yeah. It's a voluntary lock-in that <laughs> seems like from the outside, like it'd just be this ridiculous thing. Like, mm-hmm. why would you do that? But well, I think we'll break down some of the reasons that might give you insight into actually why this is such a widely used tool. And we're talking about QuickTime and Final Cut and stuff like that. Yeah, and, basically everything. And why it's that... pushed us in this direction. Yep. And then also, I think by the end of this series, we're going to definitely talk about... I, we'll call, we'll, we won't be all negative. I think there's definite advantages to Hackintosh, but I think mm-hmm. we should definitely cover some why we don't recommend the Hackintosh route. Yeah. I and, you know, we up. mentioned today the hardware prices, but, you know, there's software prices to consider too. Mm-hmm. So we'll probably be talking about that during quick time because it's very much has to do with codecs yeah. and software workflow. And, so I think it's going to be a pretty well rounded out week. So yeah. we'll be uh, live um, Monday. Nope, sorry. It's a bad habit. Tuesday through Thursday at uh, 8 p.m. Pacific, mm-hmm. and there's a time, con- time zone converter and a calendar over at jupiterbroadcasting.com slash calendar. We do this uh, live over at jupiterbroadcasting.com slash live. I want to point out one more thing. Yeah? This weekend is Halloween. Yeah. Um, Thursday is supposed to be our Looking Towards the Weekend show, so yeah. Yeah. we're still kicking around ideas of what we might be doing for Halloween. M- maybe it's nothing. Maybe we're too neck deep in this thing I to actually know. figure it out. We had kind of an idea that was... Maybe. I, anyway, I tune in. Good. We're going to try to have some fun this Thursday. Yeah. I liked it. Yeah. All right, everyone. Well, thanks so much for tuning in to tonight's episode of Jupiter at Night, and we'll see you tomorrow night.